Welcome to another episode of Tim's Garage. Today I'm going to talk about one of the shortcomings of these Kappa cars when you're out autocrossing them. Apparently when you autocross them they get very very warm and one of the things that starts to get a little too warm is the power steering. And the power steering gets heated up significantly because of the turbo and with the car coming back and sitting and heat soaking the uh, radiant heat from the turbo really heats up the reservoir that sits adjacent to the turbo that's right here. You can see how close the power steering reservoir is to the outlet of the turbo, but also the heat generating source right here. And that heat is so close that it starts to heat this, this reservoir up. So I started thinking there's options out there. There's one option to relocate this all the way into this cavity right here um, to create a, an opportunity that does two things. It relocates the power steering to here, and then with the extra hosing that it runs, adds quite a bit to the capacity of the system which would also assist in being able to keep it cool because with the larger volume it takes longer to heat up that whole volume of coolant. I decided that what I would like to do is come up with a way of quickly just installing a, a heat shield that might be advantageous to reduce that heat and I noticed that on this bracket there's two unused holes that are on the bracket that holds the power steering and I don't know if you can see the two holes there's one hole here and then one hole further down those two holes that are in this bracket i think i'm going to utilize for a shield that i'm going to put in there and i'll give you an example so what i've done is i've uh, cut and taped together and created a template and it looks kind of messy and sloppy at this point but this template i have taken so that you're able to take and drop this template straight down into the car. And if I was to affix this template, if I cut it out of some material like aluminum and installed it, it would create a pretty good heat barrier around the uh, power steering reservoir. Now, I'm not certain this is gonna work. So at this point, it's kind of anecdotal, but I am gonna make a prototype. And uh, now that I've got my template completely done, what I, what I did is I took that template and I laid it out on a piece of uh, 1 16th inch aluminum. Uh, it's 6061 T6 aluminum. And I laid out the, uh, the template and I gave myself an extra half an inch at the top. But I laid it out and created my initial template that I'm going to go ahead and cut out and reproduce or uh, and fabricate uh, once I get this done. I'm likely to layer two or three layers of uh, material so that I'll be making a, a, an extra one as either a, a template or in case somebody else might want to try this after. Once I'm all done with that, I've got some uh, Thermotech heat barrier that I'll put on the back side of the template as well as on the little bracket that's located down below to try and reflect as much of that heat as I can. But uh, what I'll do next is cut out this shape and I'll uh, show you how I cut it out and then I'll also show you how I bend it up to fit in the vehicle. Okay, so what I've done so far is I took the template, traced it out onto um, a piece of metal, and from there I decided that I was going to do two pieces at once. So I've clamped together two pieces of material. I've uh, drilled the holes to create a radius, an inside radius, where I wanted the radiuses to be so that they would have a curve, because it's kind of hard to cut that with a, with a hacksaw or with a jigsaw. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the two pieces and make sure that I finish them and have them all shaped to exactly the same size. So I'll have one that's a template if I wish I can take into a uh, specialty fabrication shop. Maybe I can get a stack of these things cut out fairly inexpensively. So that's my goal. So here I'll give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing to start. Um, I'm simply going to start cutting. I don't know what the best way to do this is. Probably just like this. I need to move a clamp over just a bit more. There we go. Okay, so there's the, the first cut that I've made. 
and it's to the two pieces of material so I'll be able to make both pieces exactly the same as I go through and I'll preserve the nice radius that I've got there. So I'll be back at you after I cut all of the piece. I'll cut it all out and uh, we'll, I'll show you the final cut. All right, now that I got the sheet all cut out, the next step is to ensure that I've got the markings on, on this all correct for where I'm gonna put it into the uh, sheet metal break and bend the additional ridges in this to the degrees that I need to have it so it'll fit properly. Now I did do a test one first. I bent this up last night and uh, it, it turns out it fits perfectly, but 6061 T6 aluminum, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but I got a little aggressive bending it and I broke the uh, aluminum. That's not exactly the best way to go about building a bracket is to start out breaking it. But uh, I had overbent this particular bend and tried to bend it back. And uh, lesson learned, you bend aluminum one time. It work hardens very easily, and when you try to rebend it again, you just break it. So this 6061 is not the most ideal for, uh, for bending, but you can bend it to about 70 degrees, and it works pretty, pretty well at a 70 degree angle. And that's pretty much all of the bends that I have are going to be about 70 degrees. So just to show you how you go about bending one of these, I've relocated one of the bends because of the proximity that this had to the, uh, uh, the air outlet tube from the turbo, and I'll show an image of that. That uh, proximity made it so that when the engine rolled over uh, under acceleration and leaned over on the motor mounts, it would get just a little too close for my comfort, so I decided to make a little extra clearance. So to go ahead and bend this, it's... Uh, a fairly straightforward process to bend it, and I need to think here which bend I'm going to do first. I think, if I remember correctly, the bend I do first is this one. And you simply secure it down, make sure you've got it lined up beautifully along that line for where the bend's going to be, clamp it down tightly. And I've got a protractor here that I've been using to ensure that I've got the, uh, the angle correct. I need to go to about a 70 degree bend. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and bend that up and I'm gonna do it nice and easy. In fact, in this case, I think what I'm gonna do is just to nail it a little bit. Just to make it just a little easier to bend. Okay, here we go. And I'm bending it carefully. I don't want to break the darn thing. Okay. Now, I'll quickly have a look and see what angle we're at. Okay, that there is at 40 degrees. I need to go a little bit further. So I'll clamp it back down. And... Continue the bending process, see if I can get it to bend up without breaking. Okay, we got a little bit of relaxing when we let go. Looks like it's bending appropriately. See if I get to the 70 degree mark. Okay, we're at now 55 degrees, and I want to be at, at 70, so I'll continue just a little bit more. And you don't want to over bend. So the purpose is to go as carefully as possible and definitely not overbend the uh, material because you have no option to, to straighten it out. That bend looks like it worked out pretty well. And I am at uh, 65 degrees. And my plan calls for a little more than that. So I'm going to do one more attempt. And wherever I'm left with, that's probably where I'll just leave it for now. Okay, I think that's going to be it for my bend. All right. And looking at the degrees, I'm exactly... If you can, I, It's hard to tell in here, but you can see it's exactly at 70 degrees. So with it at 70 degrees, that bend is complete. If you look on the back side, it hasn't split anywhere. So the 6061 bent just fine, and there's the first bend. So you can see I've tightened that bend up 
relative to the other piece and that was to move the bend a little further away from the air intake port at the top and uh, I'll show a photo of the final assembled item once it's been installed with that properly done. The next bend alright so bring this down then the next line here. Okay. I've got the bend nicely set. Just going to make sure I've got this perpendicular to the surface. Let's just see if we've got that perpendicular. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. So I'm going to clamp it. Now this bend needs to go... Uh, let's see here, 70 degrees as well. I don't want to go more than that. So this one here will, will bend the same way, doing a nice gradual bend up. And you want to go nice and slow. You don't want to rush this at all. You need a little bit more. You want to be very careful not to break it. So rushing it and trying to bend it too much all at once is just going to result in it splitting. Okay, and that one looks pretty good so far. Okay. Angle, and I'm currently at, let's see what am I at, 55 degrees, so I'm close. I'll push that back down again. And Let's just loosen this up. All right, we're at 55 degrees. See if we can bend it just a little bit more. Okay. Now I bent this one cold without any heat. So I can just start. I don't see any splitting yet. Let's quickly do a measurement. See where we're at with degrees. We're at. 65 degrees actually 68 degrees so it's almost there I just need a tiny little tweak to make sure that it's gonna make the corner the way it's supposed to so I'll do a very slight bend okay that should do it that should give me my 70 degrees let's just quickly look and we are at in this case, 70, if we, if we can see the measurement here, we're actually at, let me get this held again, we're actually at uh, what looks like 73 degrees. So I had a 75 degree target, and I went to 73, so it's a little, a little sharper than I wanted, but it'll be just fine for purposes of this. And then the last bend is going to be a 65 degree bend, and I'll... Uh, I'll tag this one and we got it clamped down really nicely. Just take this one and do a nice casual, well I didn't lock that down enough, there we go. Do a nice 65 degree bend in this one. Okay, and let's see if that worked out okay. And we are at 50 degrees. Actually, it needs to go a little bit more, and I'm running into interference on the brake, so I may be uh, stuck when I change the one radius. It caused a little bit of a problem with the clearance, so. Okay, so let's see if that worked. I think that's going to be adequate. So we're now at. Oh, we're now at uh, 60 degrees. Perfect. So we've got our the piece bent up. I have one last bend that I'll do manually, and I'll do that with a, a pair of sheet metal grips. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'll do that separately. And uh, I've got one piece bent up. Looks like this one's going to work out just fine. And this item will be designed to be able to drop in just like this. 
and simply bolt up to the to the uh, bracket that's already there and existing, which makes for about a two minute. This will make for about a two minute install for those that want to just go ahead and do this. I may I may produce these if there's an interest and anybody else wants them. Uh, once they're cut out, the bending is pretty uh, straightforward. So I'll uh, come back with a video of installing the heat shield and uh, actually installing it in the car. Okay, so now that I've got the heat shield all bent up and ready to be installed and test fitted, and actually I've actually got it already test fitted in the car, uh, I just wanted to make a couple of points. One of the things I thought is there was a couple of ways to create a heat barrier. and One is having the aluminum heat shield there and either doubling that layer or maybe using some kind of a, a heat shielding uh, on top of the uh, aluminum to be able to create a barrier for heat. And so what I wound up using was something called uh, Coolant Thermatech Aluminized Heat Barrier. And this is an adhesive backed uh, item that I was able to affix to the outside of the heat shield so that when I put that on it'll prevent heat from radiating through the heat shield and it worked. Now this uh, material is actually pretty good. This is the residual amount that I had after I did all the cutting but it's just an adhesive back so it, it's an extremely sticky surface and you have the ability to be able to stick this to the aluminum and it'll and it'll adhere extremely well. And um, I've got a picture that I'll insert into the video right here that shows what it looks like with the heat shield put on it. I also used a, uh, a little bit of rubber boundary around it to create a barrier so that the edge of the heat shielding after you cut it doesn't start to fray because it looks like this material will fray quite a bit and it might not look that good and I wanted it to look nice. The second thing I did is the tubing that was running to the power steering unit itself was just bare uh, tubing. It was just rubber tubing. And so I used something called Express Sleeve. And this is uh, another Thermotech product and it's called Express Sleeve. And it's an aluminized hose and wire protector for heat. And it's extremely good because you don't have to take any of your wiring off. And it's got a Velcro. Uh, positive and negative on either side and so the way this works is you simply coil it up around whatever tubing you want to protect and you fix it with the velcro and now you have a heat shielding that's now around your tubing and you didn't have to disconnect the tubing and get any fluid anywhere and leak it all over your garage floor I hate leaking on the garage floor and now what we'll do is we'll go and we'll have a look at the car okay so now that um, I've talked a little bit about putting heat shielding and stuff on, I've already test fit the uh, heat shield into place. And I just want to show just how easy it, it slid in. It literally just, you uh, unbolt the one single bolt that holds the power steering reservoir here. Okay, you unbolt it so that this is loose. And if you look carefully, you can see the, the tubing heat shield, that uh, Velcro adhesive heat shield down at the bottom that's around the very large tube. Uh, that runs from the bottom of the power steering reservoir. In addition, you can notice here, these are the two bolt holes that were already existing in the bracket. And I utilize those two bolt holes and you can access the bolts just from inside with the power steering out of the way. So with the power steering just lightly, lightly moved out of the way, you have the ability to do that. Then to reinstall the power steering, it's, it's literally this much work. So we slide it back into place, we start the a little bolt and uh, reverse the wrench and so with doing up those other two bolts as an install there we have it the, the heat shield is now installed the power steering uh, reservoir is back in place and for now I'm going to keep the stock reservoir but I did see a very nice new aluminum reservoir from RPM Motorsports and I'll put an image of that in the video right here At some point, I'll probably upgrade to that particular aluminum one, provided it's the same diameter as the stock one. So with the heat shield all done, um, everything fit in. One thing I did need to do, I had just not quite enough clearance here, even with the, the changing and the bending of the unit. And what I did is I grabbed the entire assembly and I bent this bracket that's right here 
just ever so slightly. So when you pull on it, and you pull this whole unit, you have the ability, and it bent this bracket just the tiniest bit, just to tweak it to give it just enough clearance that under uh, engine torque and load, it won't lean over and bump into this uh, heat shield. Now, so with that said, I've now got a, a heat shield done. I don't know if it's gonna work as I, I think it's gonna work, I'm hoping. But this summer when I get it out, I'll do some uh, temperature readings with this and maybe another car that I can find and see if we've got any difference on the road. I have a laser thermometer and I'll see if I can see temperature difference between two different cars running. The cool part about this is the way the heat shield is designed, any air that comes in from the, the front of the car will be ducted around this particular power steering pump. It looks like there'll be decent airflow that allows it to move around this pump while insulating it away from the big heat source we have there that's the turbo. So with that said, um, that's my uh, heat shield addition to the Saturn Sky Redline and possibly the uh, Pontiac Solstice GXP. Both of them have the same configuration, so that might be a good option. We'll see whether uh, anybody else wants one of these. I have a template for it. And I'd be happy to share the template. Again, my, my name's Tim. Thanks for uh, joining me on my channel. If you like the video, please like and share and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Bye for now.